Welcome to my presentation on the world of OsoBots, the mini programmable robots controlled by tablets and color codes. So my journey began at Queen's University when I was introduced to the OsoBots um, through a peer who had um, shared their library and the OsoBots that were in it. And this got me really interested. I ordered the DRC kit and worked with another teacher who had already introduced it into her grade five classroom. And she had introduced the paper and the marker with the OzoBot coding. And um, I felt that this would be something I could easily do in the grade three classroom. I went to the OzoBot website upon receiving my kit. And um, after looking through the manual, uh, decided to look up some lessons or ideas. And I came across this video which was truly inspiring. Osobot is, is, a, is a window into the future of robots. It's a semi-autonomous, line-following robot that has all types of sensors that allow you to program any behavior that, that the robot needs. It offers us the ability to get coding in every classroom, regardless of the content area and regardless of the grade level. You know, robotics and coding can seem intimidating for some students, but the Ozobot is sort of has this sweet character about it. We use Ozobots in the classroom in every subject area. The exciting part is really teaching kids how to code and how to use them. The older kids can do more advanced coding, and the younger guys can stick with the more basic stuff and work their way up. It can be used all the way from age three to grade 12. It really is great for any age. My ninth grade students were so excited to play with the robots. We had a lot of fun using them as the planetary orbit model. A lot of teachers in our district aren't familiar with coding, and Ozobots have enabled them and empowered them to understand that you can code in every classroom. They created artwork with the Ozobots, so they coded the Ozobots to do something specific, like make a rainbow or make a doodle. And then we had an Ozobot art gallery with all of the finished products. Having something like Ozobot at the center of them not only lets that idea get started quickly, but it also creates a door into programming. They can look at a, a human impact problem and use the Ozobots as models to help engineer movement of a trash collection in the ocean with ocean currents. One little girl came up to me and she said, Mrs. Little, do you think we could make roller coasters out of our Ozobots? And I'm thinking, well, we could sure try. Let me think about that one. So it's something that the kids are able to, to sit down with and, and have that first feeling of victory and success. Um, and wonder, the, the, the ability to come up with an idea you couldn't imagine before. That's, that's really what those robotics sells up. So I was truly inspired and was definitely able to see how I could reach the higher levels of the Samar model using Ozobots as well as being able to make curricular connections in all areas and know that I could use this if I was using it in the library with diverse grades. So I was really excited about exploring this resource and um, and so I began my journey by looking up how much it might cost um, if I was to need to purchase this for our school um, so we could have it permanently um, in, in our school. And it's about $1,800. I have seen it $1,500, but this um, total, uh, the bots might not have been 18 It might have been 14 Our kit came with 14 with very durable bots um, and a charging station. So um, it comes with all the pieces that are necessary to uh, get you started. Um, I really truly feel that the ozobot.com website is your is the first place to start. You can after that and you'll probably find these along the way. I found this resource very valuable. It was the teacher's guide that introduced me to um, the way to set up your ozobot. So watching this video and um, training yourself so knowing how to calibrate your Ozobot, the lines, how to turn it on and off, and then afterwards teaching your students and teaching your students both of the two different ways to code. So there's basic training color codes and then there's basic training for Ozoblockly, which is using the computer. So this was an excellent place 
for me to start and in there I came across these coding sheets. So the coding sheets were um, introduced to me first of all in my kit because our DRC had photocopied them and put it inside and it's really important students learn to draw the width of these um, codes correctly so within one centimeter. You can code your uh, Ozobot with different speeds, different directions, different um, timing so you can actually make the Ozobot stop. You can turn the Ozobot off with a code and you can also pause the Ozobot with a code. These cool moves were something that um, I will show you in the video. I believe it does the tornado that's coming up. So another tip which I shared with my students and was also in my kit was this page which you can print off yourself. It teaches you how to calibrate using the color code um, paper method um, with a black dot. It also shows you on this sheet um, what the do's and the don'ts. So too thin, too thick, and different sizes won't work. Um, also if you're doing too sharp of a curve or you're doing a turn that's less than 90 degrees, those will not work. Um, you need to make sure that your line is this thick um, as thick as, as your marker tip and hopefully you have wide tips on your markers. So a very helpful sheet that also show that if you do your code too long the colors it will not work. They need to be within a centimeter um, in width when you're drawing them with no breaks and, and no differences in, in the width. So another um, thing I found on the website where the videos were exceptionally um, diverse, many, many, many videos, and with um, how-to-dos and with different lessons. And this fact sheet will answer all of your questions from the simplistic questions to the very difficult questions. An excellent fact sheet right on the website, ozobot.com. Um, I... Uh, began my lessons not using the Blockly method but using the paper and marker method of coding. Yes, I don't know what. What? You call that a neutral move? Yeah, don't touch it. Leave it alone, Robert. Oh. Oh, now we'll see it redo it. You turn and go back okay. around. We. Okay, there we go. That's the way I want Now good. Come on. You won. Yay. So this um, is just the one way, um, the color coding way, and then there's the Blockly coding way, which is shown by this picture. Um, she has her Ozobot in her hand. It's very similar to Scratch. I found this portal very helpful. It included training videos for both of these types of coding and as well included some lessons that were for all different grades. One of the lessons that I found in this portal was this one which is a, a lesson on um, hitting the bowling pins and so you can code your Ozobot using either the computer or the Ozoblockly app or you can use paper to draw lines and I might um, get the students to see um, the difference between how fast the Ozobot is going, um, how well they will hit the lines, or sorry, the pins um, when it gets to the end. So it does outline what you need for this. One of the kids in my class, upon hearing me talking to another teacher about this, <laughs> he was eavesdropping, he said, hey, I have some bowing pins at home, so he's going to bring those for us next week. I'm pretty excited about that. I haven't actually um, done any of the Blockly coding yet. So I've only done 
um, the basic training for um, the color coding. But this is where I could start and I could um, share this lesson um, with my students um, and, and, and take a look at some of the lessons to do it on the uh, iPads. So I'd have to first download the app to the iPads and then um, go through some of the training modules with the students on that. Uh, so the, the um, value that I found when I introduced this in my classroom was that it made abstract coding ideas more tangible with using the Ozobot. It also improved the fine motor skills of some of my boys that um, were excellent mathematicians and able to code very well, but they still didn't have the fine motor coordination and this really helped develop them that. I also noticed that the girls were talking about um, the, the drawings, the lines, and the places on the map um, they were giving them names. So they were using their imagination to develop stories about where their Ozobot was going. This circle was very much like what I had set up in my classroom and the sharing that was going on both verbally and visually with the students was incredible and they were building on each other's ideas and learning more about the Ozobots in, in, at a faster pace than they would if they were separated um, in the classroom. So a very powerful tool and um, the resources that I decided to look for later on the website um, or on the big wide web included some that would um, come from our local areas and I wanted to see what other teachers were doing in BC with this resource and with our curriculum. So I looked at um, first of all UBC who shared uh, some information about what an Ozobot is, um, why it is relevant, and how to get started. And this was an excellent video demonstration. As well, I also looked at um, this website, which was from School District 71, which shared some um, activities that are relevant for reading and writing and inspiring students um, to read and write with the Ozobots at the grade two level, the ADST math and English language arts was considered, the big ideas were considered in this document, and the curricular competencies. So you can really see how the ADST, ADST curriculum was um, acknowledged. The School District 23 has an excellent coding um, online resource that shares the different uh, websites that you can go to to get ideas as well as the tools um, that most districts are starting to acquire in their district. Um, some are online such as Scratch and, um, and how you can get involved with uh, other teachers in coding. Last one was, um, well, there was a couple more, but um, another website that I thought was really important was this website which is a UBC website again and this one offers different ideas of what coding looks like without technology and with technology in different grades and how you can really incorporate um, coding in, in art such as in jewelry making where you're setting up patterns and also with your body where you're setting up patterns in outdoor gym games so not just using um, these uh, tech tools like dash and dot um, or online uh, coding programs like Scratch Junior. Uh, but this was a very great resource. So if you were wondering what's out there, this, this would be an excellent place. My resources came from Flickr and I have to acknowledge that Ozobot is an excellent resource with tons of lessons. Code BC is a local resource we should look at. And of course, we should always check the, the curriculum. Thank you for listening to my presentation.